Hello. Um, good afternoon. I'm being chased by a bee right now. Um, I wanted to say, um, uh, Madeline J, Little White Man, Imachiapi Na, Imataha, Maddie's Native Creations in Fort Duchenne, Utah. Uh, so in English, what I'm saying is, good afternoon. My name is Madeline J, Little White Man. I'm the owner and uh, yeah, owner and creator of Maddie's Native Creations. Uh, my name is, like I said, my name is Madeline Little White Man. My Lakota name is uh, Chante Tizawi, which means strong heart woman. And today, what I want to talk to you about is, or what I want to do is a tutorial about called uh, Lakota style quote work. And let me start off with telling you what Lakota quill work is or what quill work in general is. Quill work is taking rawhide, whether it's buffalo, deer, uh, cow, uh, rawhide, and we're marking it out, making things from earrings to bracelets to hat bands to uh, centerpieces for necklaces, all sorts of things, and all those different kinds of styles of earrings and whatnot, bracelets, all that, wavy, straight, double row, double row, wavy, so forth. You know, um, here's some examples is I have, I'm going to be making, not right now, but I'm today I'm going to be making uh, bracelets. These are about seven inches long, about maybe an inch and a half, inch, inch and a half um, wide. Uh, I'm going to be quilling these today. I have, so I have six bracelets. Got that bee to get away from my pop. <laughs> um, I've got some quilled, uh, heart, uh, crosses. Um, you see the markings that are right here. That's where I'm going to start and stop at when I quill. So just this inside is going to be full of quill work. Quills. And then I have a teepee that's going to be hung up like a necklace and then I have eight pairs of teardrops and those are going to be quilled and so I have these these are all ready to go and marked out um the process of making quill work or creating quill work is of course you got to have your porcupine quills when you get them you're going to wash them then after after you're done washing them, let them dry. And then from there, you're going to take them and you're going to dye them. You're going to use either RIT, R-I-T, R-I-T um, dye, or you're going to use the cake and frosting dye um, for the more exotic colors like turquoise and hot pink and stuff like that. Um, depending on the store that you go to, you might be able to find hot pink or turquoise in RIT, but not not all the time. Like I couldn't find it. Um, I found the basic colors, but I didn't find the turquoise and stuff, so I just went to the, the pastries and the cakes and found the little icings and turquoise, lime green. Um, those are the two main colors that I wanted. Those are my favorites. So I dyed my quills into those, and then when you're done dyeing them, you let them dry. Then you got to pick them through and pick up the ones that are long enough, not too, not too thick, but long enough and just thin enough that it's going to wrap around not look too bulky or thick or anything and it's going to look good you're going to when you do your rawhide it's up to you how you, thick you want it or how thin you want it um i like mine thick because it's more sturdy it's not so flimsy it's not so like it looks like it's going to break it's it looks more sturdy it looks more stronger so i know that then to my customers that it, it's going to last a long time so after you do that, and when you set up your table and everything, then what you got is you got your tools that you're going to use, which is, you know, string. And that's to help tie it down. Your scissors and your cutters. And the cutters are for when you wrap it around and you have that excess quills, um, like this one, for example. You're going to cut it off at the end. You know, so it's not sticking out. So if you're wearing these as earrings, that extra little long piece of porcupine doesn't get stuck in your hair, doesn't poke you or anything. If you're wearing it as a bracelet, again, it's not going to 
when it's being worn, it's not going to rub and poke you and start scratching you up. So you, that's why the cutters are there. So let me show you how my workplace looks right now. I've got my stuff. What I'm going to do is we're going to make uh, the other side to this, which is one side to an earring. So here's my quills. I have turquoise, black, red, orange, yellow. This red that I dyed is a cherry red, and I, and I let it boil with the color and the vinegar and everything try to get it as dark red as i can in the end it still came out like i said cherry red so it kind of came out like a hot pink ish red um and then i have my white quills my green quills and my purple quills and so let's start off um with making our core work. We take the piece. Um, the colors I started on here obviously were black. So I'm going to find a black piece. going to take it and trim off the end. The end that I'm trimming off is at the tip here. And that's the part that came out of the porcupine. So you're going to take that and you're going to wrap it around. So you're going to do it like this. This long piece goes underneath, comes up. This short piece goes down. Then you're going to tighten it, and you're going to go around. And I think on this one I went around four times, but that was dependent on the quill. So I'm going to find another piece of quill. Um, yeah, while you're quilling, while you're doing this, you're going to run into that you're some of your quills still have hair on it from the porcupine. That's fine. Um, makes it more authentic, I guess. And you're going to wrap. And you want to wrap as closely to it as possible. Okay, so I wrapped it around four times like the other one. I'm going to trim it a little bit. And then I'm going to go for the turquoise. And i got to find a long enough turquoise to go around three times and there's one right there so you're gonna take it sometimes the black end is pokey too you can trim it down a little bit um, so you don't poke yourself too much whether I'm beating or quilling or even sewing I poke myself with either needles or porcupine quills or anything it's fine as I told my stepdaughter, you're not going to die just because you got poked by a porcupine quill. It's just, it's, it happens, quil that happens to quillers. It's not a big thing. Okay, so then I went around twice. So then I'm going to go to my red. And again, if I start to run out of quills, the water's there. I've got my quills over there in their cases. They're going to be... And it's just the same process over and over again. You can go down, up, and then you're going to go around. I try not to have gaps in between. I'm trying to make everything as close as possible and clean. So it, it looks good so there's no gaps in between it. And see, it was wet when you first put it on. As it dries, it's going to stay dried around there, and it's weave together so that, you know you don't have to worry about falling apart now the one thing i have to stress is after you get these you purchase these you can't get them wet um after they've been out there and everything and you start wearing them or whatever don't don't get them wet don't let them fall in water that it'll just get it wet and it'll unravel so try not to get it wet after you purchase a pair and wear it and no it's not machine washable whatsoever so don't try thinking that oh well i can wash it got dirty i can wash it now it's not machine washable once it gets wet it's going to unravel so then i go over here to my orange bring it down bring it up and hold it and then i'm going to go around There's my orange. Now here's my yellow. Um, who you might run into sometime to time too, a quill that's broken. 
Um, I ran into that earlier. Um, it's a black one. It broke. Okay, so I just took it off. Grabbed another quill. Um, and just continued on. So it's the same thing over and over again. Uh, you want making sure it's clean work so it's wrapped up together. Yellow. Okay, so when I got to yellow, this one had a green in there. So I'm going to come over here to my green and I'm gonna find one that can be wrapped around twice. That's really soaked. Uh, there's one. Um... This, this, learning how to quill, honestly, I learned from my in-laws. Um, my soon-to-be ex-in-laws. But, I learned how to quill from them. And, you know, I may not be as fancy as them, but, you know, it's still good to learn how to do this. So there's the green. Green's down. Um, again, because it's a dying art and everything too. So you know, quill work. Not a lot of people do it. Um, you can try to learn it. People have said, "Oh, it's really hard learning how to quill," or they're scared of being poked. Uh, like I said earlier, I told my daughter, "Don't be scared of it. You get poked, you get poked. You're not gonna die from it." You know. Um, when my son was like two years old, my husband, uh, ex soon to be ex husband, had a box full of porcupine quills. And my son, being two years old at the time, decided to stick his entire hand into that box of porcupines. And he pulled it out. His hand was full of porcupine quills. He did not scream, he did not cry, nothing. Um, to him, it was, it was normal. It, he didn't, he was just like, it didn't phase him, you know, um, so there's the orange. Um, and I told him that too, I was like, all right, baby, so now you're gonna, you're gonna be a quiller. You know, if you can do that and not scream and not cry then, you know, you're going to be like the rest of the family. You're going to be a quiller. So that, my son, too, you know, he tries to take after his mom and his dad, you know. And he tries to uh, quill, tries to bead. Um, and there's nothing, there's no shame in that if he wants to learn how to bead or quill or sew. Um it's it's still it's still good. Got these little bees and stuff flying around me. Um, I gotta find the turquoise. It's Again, going over, this one comes down, this one goes up, pull it over and around. Alright, now, this is where we're going to tie it off at. So, I need a long enough where it can go around at least twice so I can tie it off. Um, there's one. Nope. Yeah, I think it's that one. Alright, so we're gonna go this way. Bring it down. That one's pokey. That, and we're gonna go around. And I want to see if I can make it around. Yep, I can make it around once. 
twice. So this is where we're at. I'm gonna take it. We're gonna take this piece and we're gonna bring it down like so, the string. Then we're gonna wrap it again. Okay, now when we get to this side, you're gonna lasso that string around th that quill and then you're gonna tighten it up. Okay, when you tighten it up, then you're gonna bring it this way and slowly go back and forth till it pops out. Then you're gonna trim it. So push down on it. Then you're gonna take your cutters because there's that little piece you don't want cutting you on your ears. And you're just gonna trim it like that. Now there's that one. Uh, so then you're gonna trim it up. Alright. Voila. Alright. Done. Both are done. Both are done in the back. Um what I'll do is I'll put this between a book to flatten it out. And then later on today, I'll put trolls into it, put the jump ring and then the hook, put a little piece of rhinestone right there, and it's ready to go. So, you know, you're in the at the end, you're going to have a whole mess of coils around you. You're going to have it stuck in your clothes, um, stuck in your hands and your arms. But it's normal. Part of being a queller. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions um, or you want to know more, just let me know. Um, when I get done here and stuff like that, just look at Maddie's Native Creations on Facebook. Um, I have a page on there. And you'll see all this core work and the ones I'm going to do later on this evening on there. And you'll see some of the things that I'm doing on there. Like um, a lot of these I'm going to actually... Uh, attached onto pellet and bead with it and make some interesting pieces and sets off of there like i said um quail work it's a dying art form so quail work is you know when you buy it you go into museums and stores trading posts and stuff like that and you see quail work and you see that they're priced really high again because it's a dying art form not many people can do it um so that's why the amount for it is is probably higher than beadwork alone and the tack down quill work which is just tacking it down to leather it's not like this wrapping it's just honestly just like sewing it onto um, material or leather that is even twice as expensive as this so but if you have any questions or you want to know more just let me know comment below um I thank you for watching this little tutorial about how to make quill work. And I hope to hear from you guys again soon. Thank you. Piloma yaye. Thank you again. Hope you have a good day. All right. Thank you. Bye.